Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at an application of net present value NPV. Specifically, we're going to look at an example comparing buying option versus a leasing option. So this is the data that we will be using to illustrate the concept. We're going to be buying a piece of equipment. If we purchase it today, it will be $100,000. The equipment expected to last us for five years. That's the life of the equipment. The salvage value at the end of year five is 20,000. It means this is how much money we can get for this asset after five years. If we leased the asset, it's going to be five annual payment of $22,000 starting a year from now. The discount rate for this exercise, the cost of capital is 8% and the tax rate is 30%. Now to make a decision between lease versus buy, we have to know what relevant cash flows are involved. So what do we have to look at that makes the difference in order to make a proper decision? When it comes to buying, well, would the cost of the asset be a relevant cash flow? Of course it would be. So the purchase cost is a relevant cash flow. If we buy the asset, we're going to have it for five years. And if you have a property, plant and equipment, you are going to have something called depreciation. Well, depreciation is not cash flow. Why is that relevant? Well, it's not cash flow, but depreciation will give you a tax savings. And you will see how when we run the numbers. Also, at the end of five years, we are going to get $20,000 for this asset. Would this be relevant for us? Of course it would be because that's a cash inflow. So those are relevant cash lease payment of 22,000 and that's relevant for us. We are going to have, however, tax savings because the lease payment is tax, tax deductible. Therefore, the lease payment, yes, indeed, it's 22,000, but we're gonna enjoy some tax savings and we will show how we did compute those tax savings. So those are the relevant cash flow. Now we are ready to compute the net present value of buying the asset versus leasing the asset and sh see which one we should undertake. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The first thing we are going to compute is the tax depreciation shield or depreciation tax shield because when we buy the asset, as I mentioned, it can be depreciated over five years. We're going to be using the straight line method for simplicity. Now, in the real world, if you're doing it for tax, you would use makers, modified adjusted cost recovery system, but for simplicity, we're going to use the straight line. So what's the annual depreciation expense? Well, it's the cost of the asset minus the salvage value divided by the useful life. So if we take the data that we are giving, the cost is 100,000 minus the salvage value divided by the life of the asset, every year we are going to have a $16,000 of depreciation expense. What is that depreciation expense going to do? It's going to be reducing taxable income. So simply put, this is a depreciation expense. How is that helping me? Well, if I can deduct this 16,000 from my cash flow to come up to my taxable income, it's gonna help me with my taxes. How much it's gonna help? Well, if I reduce my taxable income by 16,000, well, if I do that and my tax rate is 30%, I'm going to be saving the 4,800 is the savings on my taxes. Why? Because let's assume for the sake of simplicity, your taxable income for the company for that particular year was just to make it simple, a million dollar. So if it's a million dollar and you have to pay 30%, how much will you have to pay? You'll have to pay 300,000. Now, because of this depreciation expense, now we're going to have to compute what is 1 million minus 16,000, which is 900, uh, 984,000, if my math is right. Now I'm going to compute this. This I will need the calculator times 30%. So I'm going to use the calculator. Let me just double check. I know the number is correct, but 
it's good to double check. So if I take a million, now my taxable income was a million, but now he introduces this depreciation, 984 times 0 0.3. My answer is 295, 200. 295, 200. 295, 200. So see what happened to my taxable income. It went exactly by, it went exactly by 4,800. So I just showed you how the depreciation will help reduce your taxable income, which in turn will help with your taxes. Now let's take a look at the full picture. This is what it looks like. We're gonna have a cash outflow of a $100,000 if we buy. So we're looking at a timeline, it would look something like this, minus 100K today, then every year, we're going to have a tax saving of 4,800. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 4.8, 4.8K, 4.8, 4.8, and 4.8. This looks like an annuity. In addition to that, year 5, this is year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In addition, in year 5, we're going to be getting $20,000. Now, what do we have to do? We have to compute the net present value of this problem. Well, the net, pr the present value of a single amount of an annuity because we're going to get this 20,000 only once. So we're going to discount this amount at 0 0.68058. Now, if you're saying, Farhad, how did you come up with this number? This is the present value of an annuity. You need to go to my time value of money if you don't know what this is. Because if you don't know how to compute the, if you don't know how to come up with the present value of an annuity, here it's giving to you. You have to know how you come up with this. But here it's given to you. Why? Because n equal to 5, 5 periods, and I were assuming 8%. How did I come up with this 8%? It's when we started the problem, I told you it's 8% the cost of capital. So uh, I'm going to assume this is, you know this. Okay, if not, you have to go and figure out the time value of money. And the present value of the annuity, this is an annuity, is 3.99275. Now I am ready to find the present value. I'm going to first discount the annuity. So I'm going to change the, I'm going to change the color kind of to illustrate this. So the 4,800, I multiply them by the present value factor. Those are worth in savings today, 19,165, because I have to discount them to the present value. The 20,000 here, I'm going to change a different color. The 20,000, I'm going to also have to bring it to the present value. I multiply it by the present value factor. That is worth 13,611. Now I'm ready to do what? Uh, add them together, all the savings or all the inflow of cash, not the savings inflow. That's going to that's gonna help me with the inflow of cash. Then I'm going to take the inflow minus the outflow. The outflow is 100,000. The inflow is 32,776 equal to 67,224 or 225 rounding. So my net present value is negative 67,224 for the buying option. Now let's take a look at the leasing option. Well, the leasing option will have to make a payment. However, the payment also, it's going to provide us a tax shield. Same thing as the, con same concept as the depreciation. It's the lease payment times the tax rate. So every year, we're going to pay 22000 However, this 22000 we're going to multiply it by 20, 30%. It's going to give us a tax savings of 6600 So notice, indeed, we are paying 22000 We are writing a check to the leasing company or to the bank for 22000 Our taxes, so this is negative, our taxes as a result of this are being reduced. So we are saving 6600 Therefore, what we have to compute is the net lease payment after taxes, which is the payment minus the tax savings. So the net lease payment is 15,400. What do we have to do now? The leasing option would look something like this. The leasing option, we have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. What we do now, we would use those cash flows, 15.4, 15.4, 15.4, 15.4. This is the annuity. Then we discount the annuity to the present value. So if we take 15,000, 400 times 3.99275, which is this figure here, it's going to give us the present value. Or I'm going to do this a little bit differently, just to so make sure kind of you understand the concept. Basically, we are discounting the first payment at 1.08 discount rate, the second payment 1.08 raised to the second power. I'm doing this year by year, just to kind of give you another idea of what we're doing here, just in case you're not sure. Then the third payment of 15,400 divided by 1.08 raised to the third power, then the fourth payment and the fifth payment. Then if we compute all of this, 
and we see that because we have also remember we also have all we have to do now is discount those are the present value of the payment that's all what we have this is what we're paying so the negative the net present value is negative 61,490 now we are ready to compare the two and make a decision the net present value of the buying is 76,224 or 225 depending on the rounding of your calculator net present value of the leasing is 61,000 negative 61,490 now when we have a negative MPV we're going to go with the lower negative MPV so if we want to save money Given that the negative MPV is financially leasing, the equipment is financially a better choice since it has a less negative MPV. Now, if those positive MPV, remember, those are, are positive MPV. If you're looking at a project with positive, obviously, you would choose the buying. Now, this decision is based purely on financial aspect. I mean, we're looking at MPV. In the real world, you would look at other factors, whether it's better to buy or lease, depending on other factors. But this is an application of something we, we learned about net present value computation. Net present value is an important concept, whether you are an accounting student, managerial accounting, cost accounting, studying for the CPA exam, studying for the CMA exam. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources to help you understand this concept better. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.